There's a Heisman hopeful dark horse there in Provo that we're pretty familiar with at the quarterback position. Mark Rogers TV running down each and every quarterback situation in the country. We go to BYU. We talk to Mitch Harper, who joins us from KFAN and also uh, his podcast, uh, Cougar Center. So, Mitch, of course, we appreciate the time as always. Taysom Hill, of course, injured early last season. Christian Stewart uh, filled in rather capably. If you look at uh, the bottom line numbers, 25 touchdown passes, nine picks. Uh, Taysom was completing 67% of his passes. Of course, we know about his his threat as a runner. Can you kind of size up uh, where he stands in regards to what you know about his recovery and the skill set and, and maybe some things you'd like to see him add uh, this fall? Yeah, Taysom Hill is uh, uh, coming back for his senior season. Last year suffered a, a season-ending injury against Utah State. And, and if you remember, BYU was 4-0. The nation was kind of captivated by BYU and Taysom Hill. They had that huge win over Texas in Austin, 41-7. And, and Taysom, with his kind of unique style of play, I mean, hurtling over Texas defenders, the way he's kind of built like a safety, he kind of captivated – the minds of many around the college football world. And, and he had BYU position to maybe make a run to the college football playoff with how their schedule set up, where it seemed like the toughest games were behind them. Taysom goes down against Utah state with his second season inning injury. Ironically enough, it came against the same team, Utah state, same player tackled him from Utah state. And it was the same position of the field. It was kind of a crazy situation how that happened in Provo Pat, last season. Taysom was done for the year. Christian Stewart came in and, and like you said, did a serviceable job, threw for over 2,600 yards in a, in a season that was kind of – the rest of the remaining sk- games were kind of, I think, some lightweights, if you will. Not many difficult teams, but, uh, you know, he did a nice job and he got BYU to an 8-4 and four record. Unfortunately, they lost in the Miami Beach Bowl. Now you look ahead to 2015. Taysom, going into spring football, I, I kind of thought, you know, in my own mind – that he was going to be a work in progress maybe till fall camp just because of the the nature of the injury that he suffered. I mean, a, a knee injury, set like second time in three years. I thought, you know, he's going to have to really take his time to just get ready for fall camp because he's so important to this BYU football team. Spring ball came, though, and, and he looked really good. He didn't participate in 11-on-11 11 11 work, but everything else he was participating in, throwing a nice football, and uh, he, he looked really good. I mean, coaches were even impressed with – with how physically he was ready to go. They said if, if it was a game week, if Nebraska was taking place during uh, March, he would have been playing. So I think that's something that a lot of Cougar fans should be excited about, the fact that Taysom Hill, by all measures, is going to be 100% and be that Taysom of old. Because that was one thing I also thought, too. You know, the injury happened, yes, but is he going to be that same guy? Because he's not the greatest thrower. He's not the – you know, he, he's a run-first quarterback. He doesn't take his time in the pocket to find and check down his receivers – He's naturally going to run. That's his best strength. He's 6'2", 232. He's built like an All-American safety, and uh, he, he can run the football with the best of them. But I think Pete, folks can expect Taysom to be that guy again, and I think they can also expect a better passer. Now, is he going to be this you know, quintessential, you know, perfect prototype quarterback? No, he's not going to be that, and that's, I think that's what makes college football so unique. But Taysom is someone with how this schedule is set up in 2015. He could really have the nation captivated again and uh, have BYU in a spot where they could be making some noise nationally. Some BYU faithful, I would think, might be checking out the Utah State roster to, to make sure that that kid uh, has moved on from yeah. the program at this point uh, <laughs> when uh, the Yankees come into town again. And, and you mentioned the early season schedule. Yes, a lot of attention, a lot of focus is going to be placed on BYU with, I believe, Nebraska, Boise State, uh, UCLA's in the mix, and Michigan. That's, that's, that's yeah. pretty serious stuff right there. Yeah, Phil Still uh, talked with him uh, on my podcast last week. He said it's the toughest schedule in the country in the month of September. So I don't. He said no other program plays a tougher schedule in the first month of the season. So with that, you know BYU has an opportunity to to really put Taysom in the national or the the Heisman discussion because you know Taysom. I, I think what makes him you know so special. I think you can make the case as maybe a dark horse Heisman candidate, like you said is his style of play. I mean, he's going to have those big moments, those Heisman moments, if you will, where he hurdles over a player or he stiff arms a defender. I mean, he's just such a big player, big presence. And if he does stay healthy, I think he's going to put up some big yards this year. And and BYU, too, is is going to rely on him heavily this year Uh, because there's a lot of question marks still offensively for BYU. 
And Taysom's going to have to shoulder a lot of the load. And if BYU has any hopes of, you know, navigating that month of September with a winning record, Taysom's got to be playing out of his mind because last year the defense was the worst BYU defense in the past 21 years. So Taysom's got to be a superhuman. If he does that, the nation's going to be talking. Joined by Mitch Harper of uh, 1320 K Fan, and also he's got a podcast called uh, Cougar Center, so check it out uh, as well. Uh, we talked about Christian Stewart filling in, 25 touchdown passes, uh, did a capable job. Uh, Taysom hopefully stays on the field for the, in- for the duration uh, this time around. Uh, can you line up his backups and, and what we may see um, if he gets injured or hopefully Cougars uh, jump out to some big leads and, and, and have some cruise control games in the fourth quarter? It's really a unique situation, Mark. Uh, if you go back to spring football, uh, like I said, Taysom didn't participate in 11-on-11 drills. And after Taysom, there was no scholarship quarterback on the roster in spring football. So what did BYU do? They turned actually to Christian Stewart, who already exhausted his eligibility, but he was still enrolled in school. So they kind of had found a loophole. He actually threw for BYU as a first-team quarterback and kind of simulated a D1 quarterback for BYU's defense in spring football. It was a really strange circumstance how Christian Stewart came in and performed in 11-on-11 work because after Taysom in spring ball, there really wasn't anything to to go with. There was a kid named McCoy Hill who was a walk-on. He actually took first-team reps, but day one of spring ball, he went down with an ankle injury, was out for the rest of spring. So that's when BYU turned to Christian Stewart, and and he and it was really important. I think you and Bronco Mendenhall said that during spring ball that it was vital to this defense to get a, a D1 quarterback, giving them looks that they they can expect maybe in the fall because there was no one else. And and BYU was was pursuing maybe some junior college quarterbacks, but none of them actually came into the program. So now we look ahead to the fall, though. Um, the number two quarterback is, is someone that a lot of BYU folks are very excited about. In fact, this kid was the, his name's Tanner Mangum, Eagle, Idaho, true freshman, um, class of 2012. And he's a true freshman. That's the uniqueness of BYU right there. 2012 gray shirted 2013 and 14 served a mission. He came back two weeks ago. He's already enrolled in the program, participating in summer conditioning. Tanner Mangum, 2012 co-MVP in the Under Armour All-American game with who else? Famous Jameis. Jameis Winston. Um, he was a lead 11 performer quarterback in the class of 2012. So a lot of folks around BYU are excited about Tanner Mangum. I think they're also excited about him because he's the quintessential BYU quarterback. You know, because BYU quarterback position in, in terms of college football, I think it's one of the most prestigious position positions in all the sport, especially out West when you talk like USC running back, BYU quarterback. I mean, those are coveted positions in the sport of college football. And and a lot of folks around here have been kind of upset with some of the inconsistencies with quarterback. Even with Taysom Hill, they get frustrated because he's not that passer type. They're not used to someone that can run the football and plow defenders like Taysom can. Uh, Tanner Mangum's going to be that guy, and he's going to come in, and he's going to be prepared as an, a number one quarterback because, you know, like I said, two out of the last three years, Taysom has went down with an injury with this tough of a schedule and with the workload he's going to get. Tanner Mangum's got to be ready to to take come in if necessary. Um, and Bronco said that he's a quick understudy. He feels that he's one of the smartest quarterbacks he's ever recruited. Um, so Tanner Mangum is going to have some lofty expectations. He's going to compete though for that number two spot. He'll definitely get it. I would expect the other the other kid, another true freshman, class of 2015 kid, the son of Merrill Hodge. His name's Bo Hodge. Only played one year of high school football as the quarterback. Uh, out of the state of Kentucky, LDS kid, came, comes to BYU, had a few offers from like Cincinnati and programs out in that area, um, but uh, he's coming to BYU true freshman, but I would expect he's probably going to be the third string quarterback, but it's very no experience though after Taysom Hill, which can be dicey with the type of schedule that BYU is going to face this season. Okay, when we talk BYU football, we go to Mitch Harper of uh, 1320K Fan and also check out his podcast, uh, Cougar Center. Mitch, it's always a nice uh, discussion. Sometimes we go back and forth and uh, get into a little bit of debate. This time, pretty much clear-cut, getting some information and insight with media days, as you mentioned to me before we jumped on, 10 days away for BYU. Yeah. So that really gets us ready for college football. Good stuff, Mitch. Thanks, man. I always appreciate being on the show.